Hey guys, welcome back inside the State Champ Sports Network studio. We're recording on Thursday, so happy Halloween to each and every one of you out there. If you didn't get a chance to check out our Halloween episode, it aired last Sunday. Uh, you can check it out on State Champ's Facebook, it's YouTube page. We had a lot of great fun at Rotten Manor. And believe it, you know, we want to make sure we give a, a shout out to Rotten Manor. They're open Friday and Saturday, so it's out in Holly. Get yourself out there. So you've been there. I've been there. It's a, it's a great spot. I just saw some clips of the show as well. It was fun. I love it. Tis the season, right? Absolutely. So happy Halloween to everybody out there. Or in this case, I hope you had a great Halloween. Absolutely. And of course, Sean Belisian back here in the studio with us. It's time for a scary good Mr. Football <laughs> Halloween update. And what we're doing for you this week is first to let you know the field's locked. Yep. We've got our top 10. This is what we're going with. And you can find all the candidates at statechampsnetwork.com right on the whole page. Just click on the banner and vote for your guy. What we want to do is kind of tell you right now uh, where these guys are, are playing in the playoffs, meaning their teams, uh, kind of how we expect them to do, and, you know, just overall how we feel their team should fare in the playoffs. Because, again, if you check our criteria, big game performance, team success, is a lot of who determines Mr. Football. Well, this is where you really see the cream separate. I mean, there's no other way to say that. The cream is going to rise to the top when these guys make some of the long runs. This is money time. This is what it's all about. This is what these guys train for all off season. Regular season is just a precursor to the playoff season. Absolutely. So let's get into it. And you want to start with a, a team that I personally expect to have a really good postseason. Well, and it's interesting, Lauren, you might remember a few weeks ago we talked about this. Uh, very, very rarely do we have two guys from the same team. Right. We had to. There's no other way to say it. I mean, we had to have the quarterback. We had to have the wide receiver. Of course, I'm talking about Trainer and Yassine from Wald Lake Western. And as you mentioned, I mean, number one, they've got a tough game at home against Flushing. But this is a Warrior squad. We've seen it year in, year out. The coaching may change, but oftentimes the results don't. They have a tremendous season, and they're very capable of making a long run. But their road to four field starts with Flushing. It's got to happen with Flushing first at home. Yep, Warriors averaging 42 points a game this season. Scored at least 35 in every contest. Obviously, your quarterback and wide receiver have a big part uh, in that. They're only lost 38-35 to Orchard Lake yep. St. Mary's. And I expect Orchard Lake St. Mary's to run the table and get back into the state finals. Uh, but, you know, this is one of those five and four teams in Flushing. There's a ton of them in the playoffs. And... Never underestimate Never. the first couple of games nope. of the playoffs, especially because we've seen so many upsets. Seen it far too many times. And, you know, that's what's interesting because I think what has happened now is, of course, you're always going to talk about the favorites. You have to talk about the favorites. But one thing that I've seen a lot of people do in recent years, and I want to get to a young man uh, from one of those schools, yeah. is suddenly Detroit King, everybody's talking about them being dangerous. And you're right. like, part of you is like, what are you talking about? They've, they've been so good for so long. Right. But it's and almost like they flew under the radar. They started 0-2. Yeah, yeah. You know? So uh, Rashawn Williams is a guy on our list. But as I said, if, if you read some of the previews around the state, I've seen many places talk about the Crusaders being very dangerous yes. and being a team that maybe people are overlooking. Uh, their potential road to Ford Field starts uh, with a home tilt against Temperance Bedford. Mm -hmm. And much like the first game, I don't overlook a team like that. This is their season quite often. Yeah. You know, nobody's going to say you don't have a chance, but they know that people are sitting back going, okay, well, King will have this team next, or Wald Lake Western will have this team next. So don't overlook them. But Rashawn Williams and the Crusaders certainly have a chance to put that name a little higher on our list when all is said and done. That's right. And the Division Three state champs are now back, back in Division in two. two. And I think if you're asking, they'd probably say this is probably where we we prefer to be considering how stacked Division Three is this year. Uh, a team that's averaging 41 points a game through their seven-game win streak because they've been 
seven and two since starting the season. Uh, oh and two. Uh, Rashawn Williams is a is a super talent. Unbelievable. Uh, they're going to need uh, an explosive offense if they're going to ride and run the table, and uh, they certainly have the weapons to do so. No doubt about that. You know what? I want to head up to Davis, and now yeah. Brendan Sullivan is a guy that came onto our list about midway. I, I'd yeah. say maybe yeah. week four, week yeah. five. Uh, we had a couple guys without mentioning names that said. This kid has to be on our, yes. our list. And you know what? We did our research, and we all pretty much agreed. That was a unanimous choice. We got to get this young man on the list. Davison had a phenomenal season, but I'll tell you what. This is one of the tough draws. The Cardinals have to travel to Romeo. Yeah. You want to talk about a tough game. But let's look at this two ways. Number one, it's a tough game. But number two, if you want people to, A, think you're for real, and B, improve your potential chances, Go into Romeo and knock up a team like the Bulldogs. That is the task in front of Brendan Sullivan and the Davison Cardinals this week. Yeah, interesting. You know, they they finish one and two to end the regular season. So not exactly the way that they would have drawn it up. However, a very impressive the way that Sullivan played last week, especially that drive with uh, seconds winding down to yep. able to tie up the match. Uh, he's a kid that, you know, is, is carrying the load. And he's going to have a load to deal with in Romeo, a team that uh, just barely lost to Chippewa Valley yep. not too long ago. And we all know how great Chippewa Valley is. Um, but you're right. Uh, this is going to be one of those things. If he can overcome, boy, this is going to could be Ooh. a real catalyst for the Cardinals. And uh, I know that they're going to be ready for it. And it should be one of those good old-fashioned uh, slugfests. We'll see how it plays out. Well, another guy that certainly can improve his lot as well is Ian Stewart from Gibraltar Carlson. You know, props to Stewart and Gibraltar Carlson because this is a team a few weeks ago, a lot of adversity. He was kind of banged up. The Marauders have a stiff te test as they travel to take on Riverview. Uh, and I'll tell you what, Lauren, that is another one of those games. It's a tough matchup, A, and B, it's an opportunity for Gibraltar Carlson and for our list, Ian Stewart, to show everybody, baby, we belong all year and we're going to stay here. So stiff test, but I would choose to look at it as a challenge. As Absolutely. Well. And Ian Stewart, as far as the voting go, uh, has had a good fan base behind oh, him. They has. support this kid and he does a little bit of everything for Gibraltar Carlson. And I think we really need to recognize that the Down River League was really good this Absolutely. year. I mean, Woodhaven obviously having a stellar season uh, going 9-0, and uh, but this was a, a, a league that was tough to get through, so you don't look at them finishing fourth and say, boy, you know, they're, they're just kind of uh, eked their way into the playoffs. They really had a good uh, record down the stretch, topping 60 points twice. So this team is going in with a lot of steam. Yes, they're facing a tough 7-2 and two Riverview squad. Should be a really good game. It should be. Cam Martinez from Muskegon. You knew he was going to be on the list. Rightfully so. They've been dynamic. He has been dynamic. Interesting story in this one. Muskegon, of course, plays host this week to Marquette. Yeah. But because of the field, being in such disarray, yeah. poor condition, yeah. they're going to play at Grand Haven. So let's see if that affects them. I mean, this is a team that has rolled with the punches all year, the Big Red. Cam Martinez, I mean, when you look at where he was at last year, where guys like us sat here and told you, keep an eye on this guy. You've seen him go like this. You've seen him get recruited everywhere, rightfully so. Muskegon, as far as I'm concerned, Lord, just one man's opinion, still the team to beat in their division. Absolutely. Uh, Hands down, uh, I believe that Orchard Lake and Muskegon have a date at yep. Ford Field uh, the day after Thanksgiving uh, or two days after Thanksgiving. I would also say that 675 total points is where Muskegon finished last year. Uh, and I think they finished just a little bit under that in terms of total points, so consistency is crazy. Marquette has allowed just 19 points a game, but they've never faced an offense uh, like this uh, big red squad, averaging 49, averaging 49 points a game. Uh, what can you say about Cam Martinez? He is clearly and unequivocally, he's the front runner. 
It's just the way it is. Kind of was going into the playoffs he was. last year as well. He was. Uh, but, you know, right now, this is the team to beat. This is the guy to watch. We're going to see what happens because, obviously, he was not named Mr. Football uh, after they fell to King, and we felt that uh, the way that King's quarterback performed, that he deserved to be Mr. Football. So we'll see. No, and I'm glad that you brought this up because at least, you know, every show – either Lauren or myself, we go through the process and talking about the process and how we come to this, we stayed true to the process last yeah. year. And and yes. if we go by our own criteria, it changed. And you've seen that in other sports because obviously we do that. I'm involved in one in hockey. And a lot of times there's a, a, a guy that heading into the last weekend, we all look at each other and we go, that's the guy. But if we follow our own criteria, which is why we go out of our way to put it online, to put it on the shows, to talk about it here, yeah. there should be no surprises when we announce a, 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 an eventual winner because that's our criteria and we make sure that we stay true to it. That's right. Whether you agree or yep. disagree with that's how it. we broke it down and it's just the last several years, it's been that oh, close. It you really know? has. If we could give it to two, we would. But that would, that's what makes the state champs Mr. Football Race, the original, and Hungry Howie supporting it as they do is because we put in the work to do it. Who's next? Donovan Edwards from West Bloomfield. Boy, it seems to me I remember having a conversation, not to mention any names. It's nobody here. Yeah. But somebody <laughs> that follows prep sports a lot uh, actually said, what's wrong with the Lakers? Nothing. The yeah. Lakers are the Lakers. Yeah. They're rolling into the playoffs. Yeah. And a big reason for that is Donovan Edwards. Uh, they host the Canton Chiefs. Lord, to me, another one of those teams that they're not just happy to be into the playoffs. They want to cause some damage. And certainly they've made some noise in recent years, have the Chiefs. You have to look at the Lakers as one of the favorites. But Donovan Edwards certainly has been a big part of the Lakers' success and should continue to be so however long this playoff last that's right and you want to go in playing tough teams canton's got a tough defense sure that's do. one thing that they're going to hang their hat on uh they've only allowed about 18 points a game uh and i believe that west bloomfield is going to need to score more than that in order to have success in the playoffs this is a big cog in their wheel he is a workhorse he t plays every play like it's his last play. Another thing that makes Mr. Football, our Mr. Football race so great is the fact that uh, you don't have to be a senior. Nope. This is a young man who's going to have another season of football after this one. But believe you me, West Bloomfield wants to take this one all the way. It's going to be a really tough road in Division One, but they've got the goods along, uh, you know, being led in part by Donovan Edwards. We've talked about it all year. I, I think this is an incredible junior class, a really yeah. incredible junior class. I mean, not only the guys that, that made our list or were on our list at one point in time, but even guys that, that didn't quite make the list that you already have a circle around going into next year, and that's what makes it fun. Uh, Christian Du Reed, uh, Belleville, great run last year. You know they want to take another step. Make Ooh. no mistake about that. And, and Lauren, again, just one man's opinion. I think this might be the marquee matchup of the first weekend of the playoffs. I know you are going to be there. Belleville at home, such a great place to see a game. Uh, they host the Hornets from Celine. Belleville, Celine, round one. It's going to be a tough game no matter which way you slice it. But again, here's a young man in Christian Du Reed that can take his stock and go like this with the win against Celine and subsequent wins after that. Belleville averaging 44 points a game, which is better than last season yeah. going into the playoffs. Uh, Christian Du Reed has been amazing. The way that they handled Plymouth who was having an amazing season and still may continue to have a sure. great playoffs uh, story. It shows you how good Belleville is. Uh, they're one of the best teams. We know they have some of the best talent, if not the most talent on any given squad. It's just a matter, can they put it all together and put a long run? They've proved that in the playoffs they can get wins. It's going to be a tough road. They've got West Bloomfield looming there soon if they can get this one done, but you're right. I mean, facing a really good team in Celine, it's only lost to Chippewa Valley in week one. This is going to be a great game. I'm excited to be there. I know it's going to be very cold, uh, but uh, we're going to be filming that along with a number of games on Saturday that we'll be able to, to give you those online so you can check out those highlights. Uh, up to 50 games this weekend awesome. we're going to have on the State Champ Sports Network. So you're going to have football coming out of your ears if you want to soak it all in. We've got one more guy to get talk about. I got two more two guys. Two more guys. Malik, right, Malik Carr yes. from Oak Park. I mean, this is a guy everybody knows. If, if you follow high school football, 
Popo at all. This guy is a potential mismatch for anybody. That's just the way it is. And if you want to really make a name for yourself, be the best player on the field unquestionably yeah. at playoff time. That can take your stock from here. Forget about going here. You can go there. But Malik Carr has that opportunity in front of him. The Knights' quest begins against a very good Farmington very team. Good. I know a lot of people in Farmington, and I'll tell you what, they, the one thing that they had, they got that hometown thing going, man. There's a lot of pride in Farmington right now for what they've been able to do this year. That's going to be a tough matchup. Let's keep an eye on Malik Carr in Oak Park. I credit Greg Carter for what he's been able to do with that Oak Park program. We've always wondered, when is this Knights team going to finally yep. turn the corner and represent up and, and represent deep runs in the playoffs like Greg Carter did with DePores and like he did with Inkster? So I think we're there. Yep. I think the way that I've seen this team play. I watched them play against Groves uh, several weeks back and they just look like they've got the formula for success with good leadership at the top. We will see Malik Carr is going to need to be a big part of that, whether he's doing it as a wide receiver or he's doing it on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, he is He's big, he's strong, he's a game changer. And if they lean on Malik Carr and he answers the bell, I can see Oak Park getting all the way to Ford Field and perhaps winning it. Absolutely. I, just such a potential mismatch. And if they use that mismatch, that could be a difference maker. Finally, Andrell Anthony and his gazillion fans yes. up there at East Lansing. Absolutely. They've certainly represented. Uh, you know, we were talking about the, the exciting juniors. There's another guy. I mean, this guy's yeah. got another year under his belt. Again, it's looking like he's leaning towards Notre Dame right now. Uh, we'll let him be the final say on that. But the Trojans march, uh, potential march to Ford Field begins with a home game against DeWitt. Uh, this is a young man. Uh, he's in a good position right now. If you, again, our criteria, you pay attention to the voting, but he certainly can help his cause out as well. This is a guy, Lauren, to me, just, again, one man's opinion. I think people knew who this guy was when the season started, but as the season progressed, the chatter and the buzz around his name has really picked up as well. Oh, they love him. Yeah. And I love East Lansing. I like what they've been able to do this season. They're very much an under-the-radar pick. They just happen to be a Division Three, which yeah. is just running the gauntlet. But again, if you want it, you got to earn it. They're going to have to do it from week one. This is a rematch of last year's district final. DeWitt won that one 9-7. to seven. DeWitt then got all the way to the Division Three state semifinals as a result of that. This kid leading the vote. If things continue the way they are, he will have an automatic spot in the Final Four no matter how uh, the team finishes, and he'll have an automatic 20% advantage to win the entire award. That's how much it means for you guys to get out there and vote for your guy. Andrews fans have done that in spades. Yeah, they have mounted up. Hey, you know what, Lauren? Still an opportunity. Yes, Still have lots of time. Lots of time. Get out there. Make a name for yourself. Make a name for your school. Make a name for these fine people representing your school. And uh, Best time of the year, Lauren. This is such a great time. I, I, I know everybody talks about Ford Field, and rightfully so. That's why you played it, to win a championship. Uh, to me, and you brought this up earlier, the first and second round are so intriguing because there are games that you look at and you say, they could get knocked off. So yeah. don't be surprised if some of the big boys aren't upset the first couple weeks of the playoffs. Oh, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's no just a matter of when and where. Uh, the most important thing you need to know, you've got about three more weeks. We're going to have the voting continue into the week of the state semifinals, and that is when we will reveal our final four and, of course, our champion just following the state championships on state champs so we're excited sean thank you this was kind of an extended version of our mr football report but we were happy to do it as we get into the playoffs just remember one more time state champ sports network is your home for the football playoffs up to 50 games this weekend and we're going to try to cover as many contests as we can throughout the entire playoff season because we know that's what you want a lot of fun let's do it again next week all right we'll see you then